What's up guys? So this week I'm going into units and more how to use units in your Julia code. Now, if you're working in the sciences, the computer science aspect tends to be the last part of the project where if you have equations, the, the math and the science that you're doing tends to be by hand. You're doing it on paper, you're doing it on your tablet or something. You're doing math and you're doing all your stuff and you get your equations and then you start plotting everything out. Now, I'm sure we have all made mistakes when we're doing equations and we're solving them out. It's very easy to miss a negative, very easy to mess up your dimensions. And while there are checks to do by hand, there's also a way to do checks in, in Julia and Uniful is a way to help along with that. So we'll be going into the Unifold package. And if that all sounds cool to you, please give this video a like and subscribe. Now you can see here, I already have the package and this is the first function. I have two equations here. So if you're a physics person, you can recognize these as the two kinematic equations. This is for position and I have an initial velocity, a time, one half acceleration times time squared. And then this is velocity with also initial velocity plus acceleration times time. Now, if you were just working without Unifold, you could just plug in numbers, plot this out, everything's fine and whatever. But with Unifold, we can also include units. So let's look at that. And now this is the first part. So you can see this is how we actually include our units. So I have my numerical value. So for acceleration, I'm just using the gravity. And then I type this asterisk, u, and the units that I'm interested in. For gravity, I'm doing meters per second per second. And then for velocity, basically the same idea, but you can also type out your units without the asterisk and just have the u right next to the numerical value. Where for velocity, it's u meters per second. Now, if we just print these out and we can see at the bottom that we now have units on our two values. So our acceleration is meters per second per second and our velocity is meters per second. Now, the extra part is with our functions that we have there, which are in terms of distance and velocity. If we evaluate them, there will also be in terms of those correct units. And now you can see here. So I have this T1 that I defined as five seconds. I plug that into my position function and I got meters outputted. So doing all this, this math, it came out with the correct units. And the same thing also happened for my velocity function. So even though I plugged in seconds, this it knows is its acceleration defined up here. And this they know is velocity defined here. So it did the unit math and it came out as meters per second. Now that part is cool, but an extra caveat is we all mess up in unit math. Right. It's uh, it's bound to happen. And sometimes when you're working with big equations, it's very easy to miss your units or to just make a mistake somewhere. Now, it's hard to see it if you're working with something you're not used to working with. But with Unitful, it will actually produce an error if you're trying to add two things that don't make sense. So in this case, I'm showing, let's say we're trying to add distance plus velocity together. You can see I got this massive error. So I have dimension meters, meters per second are not compatible. So it's actually recognizing that this is incorrect. Now over here, I'm talking in terms of seconds, but we can also do a conversion where this first argument is what I want the units to be converted to. And then the second argument is the quantity that I have. And then now I changed my T1, which is in five seconds to years. Now I get this fractional value because this is a really small value. Now there are some extra parts to it. So let's say we want to check our dimensions and here we're working with H H bar. So Planck's constant, if we print that out, we have H and we can see Planck's constant is in terms of joules per second. Now, maybe you don't know what joules are in SI or even just dimensional analysis. So let's say we wanted to understand what Planck's constant is at a more lower level. You can now use the type of function and that value h into it and it will actually reduce it down and you can now see that there are two length units a mass unit and then it's a per time unit now let's say we wanted Planck's constant in just si units we can do u preferred and we just put h in there the default setting for u preferred is si units so you just need to put the whatever value you're interested in into it and then you can see here we have kilograms meters squared per second, which matches the dimensions that you can that you type of showed. Now, let's say you don't work with SI units. Let's say you're an astronomer type person. You work with CGS at the top here. You would cast refer units and you would type in 
the CGS units that you want. So centimeters, grams per second, and then these three dots, and this is just for all the other units that are used. So like there's temperature and amps and all that stuff, but we're not discussing all those. And here we're just talking about CGS. So these are these units and then everything else stays the same. Okay, and now we get our new one. And you can see in CGS, we now have grams, centimeters squared per second. And you can see before I have preferred units in global scope. And this is because you have to call this before you call you preferred in any way. You call it after or just in local scope. Sometimes it acts a little weird and something that I've had to deal with. But if you work with CGS, this is a good way to convert all, all the you prefers into CGS if you need to see it in that, in that type of unit setting. And that's pretty much it to the package. There, there's some other stuff that they do, but this is the main stuff where you're using the units and it's really powerful, especially if you're working with just a lot of physics equations or science equations in general. Now, if you're more of an astronomy person, there is Unitful Astro, which has stuff for like AU, or if you're trying to define things in terms of Jupiter radii or Earth radii, or, you know, the all the, the big units that a lot of planetary people use. That also exists, also linked in the repository of Unitful itself. I got introduced to it indirectly by a colleague of mine, although he uses the Python version, which is the AstroPy, and it just, that's, that has a lot of cool stuff in it. But this Julia version is the unit part of it, of AstroPy, and it does a lot of good stuff. Okay, and that's what I have for you this week. If you like what I've been doing, please give this video a like and subscribe. The Twitter and IG links are in the description. I'll be posting weekly announcements about the channel. If you have any requests for what to cover in the future, please comment in the sections below. Tweet at me at Twitter at DJ's Office Hours or email me at DJ's Office Hours at gmail.com. Hope you learned something new and I'll see you guys next week.